Well, the first thing that I want to mention is that project management bodies of knowledge, the most recognized ones are the PMBOK, which is produced by the Project Management Institute. It's about 360 pages. Even if you aren't going to move forward and um, try to get your PMP, and I know a lot of people that have signed in are already PMPs, it, this particular document is written in a nice, fluid way. It covers different areas of project management. Some of um, the project management stuff seems like a no-brainer. It's like, oh, yeah, well, how else would you do that? Whereas part of the book is, is very thought-provoking. But it's written over the years. They've uh, refined it in a way where it's, it's fairly easy to read. So you can use it as a reference book, or you truly can read it cover to cover. Another recognized body of knowledge is something called Prince 2. Now, Prince 2 is owned by the UK, the United Kingdom government. They actually manage it. They run the test. Now, they've outsourced the testing um, to a couple of different agencies, but it's really actually a product that's owned by the UK. What's kind of fun about Prince 2 is that many of their forms and many of their ideas are simply public domain. Um, so if you um, go on Google and you do Prince 2 for forms, now keep in mind that you're going to be looking at the, uh, the UK version of English, so you might want to take those forms and kind of update them. But a lot of times just looking at different forms for project management help you be a little bit leaner. Um, the other document, the other most recognized body of knowledge right now is something called ISO, and there really should be a space there. 21500. Now, this is a project management guideline. It's uh, been recently released just in the last couple of years. It is a growing document. But um, as time moves on, you're going to be hearing more and more about ISO 21500. And so this is something to kind of keep on your radar. Currently, and again, I know a lot of you know this because you're already PMPs, uh, currently in order to become a PMP, through the Project Management Institute, the PMBOK is the primary body of knowledge that you study. On the PRINCE2 side, the way that works is there's two different tests that you can take through the UK, uh, and you can take it here in the States or internationally, and one is sort of on theory, and the other test is sort of on um, the actual tools. So you could, uh, you could take um, both parts of the test or just take one or the other. And then as far as ISO 21500, like I said, that's a guideline. However, there is talk right now with the ISO community, which stands for International Standards Organization, about trying to come up with some sort of certification. I want to take a moment to say that the International Standards Organization, generally speaking, uh, the certifications are for your company. The most common ISO certifications that you're probably familiar with are ISO 9000 and ISO 14000, um, or 9000 series and 14000 series. The major difference between the 9000 series and the 14000 um, series are environmental concerns. What ISO does is publish a book basically of best practices, and then companies map to those best practices. But once again, um, I would like to encourage you that if you are interested just in project management in general, um, to look at the PMBOK, to look at forms that PRINCE2 has. There is summary documentation about ISO 21500. Um, there is a fee to buy the whole entire standard, but there's enough summary information that you can kind of um, review that. I'm going to go on to the topic. Um, Jessica, my screen didn't change. Are you not able to say, Dr. Um, yeah, for some reason it didn't move. Okay, on the slide and then using the space bar. Oh, thank you. Okay. Um, all right, so we're going to go on to the main topic of this conversation. The, the bodies of knowledge they just talked about are the main thing about project management. So, you know, uh, the idea of project management in general. Now, lean projects, which incorporates lean and Six Sigma thinking, even though it's just called lean projects, the idea is that these projects are better, faster, and more cost effective. Now, the first thing I want to say is that in basic project management, they will tell you that, and this is like a common paradigm in project management, 
that projects, if they're better and faster, they're not going to be cost effective. You can, um, so let's say you want to do a project for your company. So um, you would ask them, well, what's more important to you? Is it, is it important that it's cost effective, that it saves you some money, and that it's faster? Because if you want those two things, then you're not going to get quality. Um, if you want something to be quality and faster, it's going to cost you a lot of money. Lean projects believe that it, to a certain extent that's true, but that you could do lean projects that are better, faster, and more cost effective. This is probably the most important slide of the entire presentation. We are going to use the word better to represent quality. We're going to use the word faster to, to be more efficient because I think that all of you would agree that you could have a process improvement that's faster, but it's not really better, right? So we're going to use the word faster, but what we mean is more efficient. And then cost effective actually has three separate buckets. Profit is always king. So if I go to you and I say, I have a process improvement project that's going to make you money, well, people are going to at least listen to what I have to say. But the other things that fall under cost effective in a lean project are savings and cost avoidance. Savings in lean has a little bit different connotation than generally speaking in savings. So for example, Let's say um, I want to buy some fruit at, this, at the store. So I go in, and at one store they have apples at $1.15 per pound. And I go to another store, and they have apples for $0.80 cents a pound. And so in my mind, I've saved money by going to that other store. However, in lean, the only way savings actually counts is if you give me $5 and you say, go buy some apples, I want you to go buy three or four apples, and I come back and give you money. So savings and lean means you have been allotted the money, you've been budgeted the money, you've been handed the money, and you give some back. So it's a little tiny bit different connotation than just saving because I put a bid out and on leadership development, um, maybe I put a, a – uh, an RFP out and said I need leadership development for my entire company and I picked a, a cheaper vendor. That doesn't count unless somebody gave me 20 k and said, here, here's $20,000, do whatever you can with it um, to teach these five people leadership development and I come and give you 3 k back. That would count as savings. Now, cost avoidance is kind of a really sticky wicket. Cost avoidance a lot of times can be tied to things such as compliance breaches. So there's all kinds of compliance organizations. There's the EEOC, there's the Food and Drug Administration, there's OSHA. And so let's say there's a violation that if you were caught, you would be fined. And in some cases, uh, like with the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, they'll actually tell you if you do X, it's going to cost you X amount of dollars. So one way uh, a project can be cost effective is if I avoid a fine by fixing the issue. So let's say in a warehouse there's an OSHA violation like there's, I mean, something that seems kind of innocuous. Um, there's a ladder that's sitting inside the area where you're um, supposed to be able to walk. So I've taped off an area where you're supposed to be able to walk, and there's one of those massive ladders just sitting in the, sitting in the aisle. That's actually an OSHA violation, and if – you were in the process of an OSHA audit, you actually could be fined up to $20,000 for that ladder. So it sounds kind of funny, but I've avoided spending. Another time that cost avoidance comes into play is if sometimes someone ends up spending a little bit more up front because they'll spend less down the line. So, for example, um, in IT projects, a lot of you already know that um, if you're implementing an enterprise-wide IT project,